Good morning. I am Theodore Roosevelt. To the White House gang, the occasional receptions were sheer annoyances. They hampered their freedom of movement. On the fringes of one, the gang had overheard some unfavorable comments upon their personal appearance, and thereafter, they never intentionally went near any of them, nor any of the extraordinary visiting pilgrimages either. When any such group wandered near the gang, they stared, then the gang would stiffen into unnatural formality and would seek business elsewhere. There were, however, unavoidable meetings. Once, when the gang was practicing ball, Quinton unexpectedly hit a high pop fly clear over the iron picket fence of the South Garden. Charlie Taft ran to the fence just in time to see a stranger pick up the ball from the roadway and continue on down the street. Hey, Charlie yelled. Thanks for the ball. Charlie held up his mitt, naturally expecting the ball to be returned. Who hit that ball over? The stranger asked, walking toward the fence. Why, Quentin did, Charlie said. Quentin Roosevelt? The man asked curiously. Sure I did, interrupted Quentin. What's the matter with my doing it? Nothing at all, the man replied. He was scrutinizing the ball in his hand. Thanks for the ball, Quinton said persuasively. What will you give me for it? The man asked. Quinton's face flushed. He was surprised into speechlessness, and he finally burst out. What will I give you? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Why should I? It's not your ball. We just couldn't get it right away because of the fence. But I'd rather lose it entirely than give you anything for what's ours. And if you take it, you'll be stealing. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, said the stranger, laughing. I'm not going to steal it, but it's a valuable ball to both of us. Now, I'll strike a bargain with you. If I throw it back to you, will you permit me to return with a dozen of the best new balls that I can buy, the kind they use in the big leagues, and exchange this ball for the 12 new ones? That would be making us a present said Quentin shortly, and I don't know you. Apparently we get all the benefit. So there's a catch in it somewhere, but I'll bite. What else do you want? I want you to write your name on the ball, answered the man. I think you're a knave, replied the well-worded Quentin, with utter frankness. But I'd be a fool not to accept this bargain. The stranger tossed the ball back to the gang and hurried away. In the course of 15 minutes or so, he returned, and handed a box containing a dozen brand new balls across the fence. Quinton completed this profitable transaction by laboriously writing Quinton Roosevelt on the old ball with a fountain pen. The gang felt this sudden acquisition of a dozen new balls was more than acceptable, since the organization of a real ball team was underway. Three days later, acting on the amazing report of an usher, the gang hurried to the store of a noted sporting goods dealer, and they found the ball the centerpiece of a window display, which was attracting a, the wistful attention of a number of boys and grown men, even. The legend under the ball said, Ball used by Quentin Roosevelt. The commercial possibilities of this transaction occurred to the gang immediately. But Quentin held that it would be very poor business for him to rush into the store and offer to write his name on various other articles of merchandise. That would cheapen it, Quentin said. Finally, Quentin rebelled against the idea of using his signature as a business proposition. And he said, I just have a feeling my father wouldn't like it so much after all. You must remember that he, it was, who made the name important. And he's really the boss of it.